already dreamed of being a doctor and helping the poor in far off countries. À l'âge de 13 ans quand j'étais élève en Angleterre, à cette époque-là déjà, j'ai été à mes enthousiasmé pour cette cette région et j'avais envie d'y aller. Je je voulais aller travailler là et c'est à ce moment-là je me déjà que je me suis dit euh ouais, comme médecin, etc., je pourrais peut-être y aller. It is in the district of Marsabit in the north of the country that Anspuri's struggle takes on its full dimension. Like here in Loyang Galad, where the members of the El Molo tribe live. These fishermen are extremely poor and suffer from many illnesses, skin disease, degeneracy due to inbreeding or bone problems. Would you like to show me the ones that you're worried about and so on? So that we can... Yeah, that one is terrible. 3.5. 3.5 kilos. It's mm. really désolant, là. Elle est là maintenant et ça ce serait le minimum et ça c'est ça c'est là un, un enfant en bonne santé mais ça c'est vraiment un minimum et voilà voilà où elle est elle était là, là le mois dernier déjà. Is there a possibility for this girl to go to the feeding? We bring them every week. Every week, yes. The full cream. I see. If, if you if you've got um, what have you got penicillin? Yes. Mon père aurait bien voulu que j'aille faire Anne's father wanted him to go to Oxford to study history or geography, but she stood up to him and started medical school in 1938. There were very few women doctors at that time. Her consultation over, the tireless doctor sets off for another village to care for the sick. She treats cases of tuberculosis, malaria, and malnutrition in children, and also cases of bites from snakes or other wild animals. Every year she takes care of over a thousand patients and takes part in vaccination campaigns. Her plane is also used to transport boxes of medicine to isolated clinics or evacuate very ill patients. She's single and has never found time to start a family. Since the day she discovered Kenya and its inhabitants, she has been hooked. J'ai été euh, passé 15 jours au Kenya avec des amis qui avaient une petite ferme dans le dans le nord, là par ici là-haut, et ça m'a tellement plu le Kenya à ce moment-là que j'ai décidé bon ben. Je vais finir ma thèse, je fais ma thèse, je reviens ici. Je m'installe. Et c'est ce que j'ai fait. Two days a week, Anne Spori goes to her farm at Sabukia, 200 kilometers from Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. She has been living in this green area of the Rift Valley, far from the big game of the plains, since 1964. And although her pretty cottage does not have electricity, it is comfortable and allows her to enjoy nature. Quand je suis arrivé ici, j'ai essayé d'avoir un poste du gouvernement. Alors on a offert trois. L'un c'était à la côte, le médecin Malindi. L'autre c'était d'être médecin three jobs. obstétricienne à Nairobi. One was on the Et puis, coast in moi, ce beaucoup, c'était d'être docteur Another was to work as an obstetrician in Nairobi. Marsabit, c'est une petite euh, the third montagne was to be a doctor on qui est comme une île au milieu du désert. J'ai dit, voilà, c'est voilà, le, le poste qu'il me faudrait. Le commissaire du district a dit, quoi, une femme sans... 
qui, qui n'est pas marié, qui, euh, qui, qui reste sans son mari à Barsabit, pas question. Elle, elle va sûrement corrompre mes, mes, mes petits district officers qui sont là. Et elle a dit non, non, pas du tout. Alors, on, on m'a dit ça, j'étais très triste. Et puis, je me suis dit, bon, ben, je vais m'installer moi-même. J'ai loué une petite officine dans le village. Je me suis installé comme médecin. Et pendant 14 ans, j'étais médecin de campagne. Anne Sporey is no longer a country doctor, but she still dispenses medical care from her home to her Sabukia neighbors from time to time. Can you give me your hand? I'll just see if I can get your pulse. Now, can you do it as, as strong as possible? Yes. And the other hand, you have cold Cold hands and cold feet also. Yes, yes. Maintenant, il y a cinq cliniques ici qui sont donc bien organisées. Il y en a qui ont même leur petit laboratoire. Et je n'ai plus tellement besoin de voir les, les malades. Seulement, ce sont des malades difficiles qu'on vient me demander de les voir. C'est pour ça que comme cette infirmière qui est malade maintenant depuis un, un an, et qui a une maladie rare et assez, assez grave, je, je viens la voir ici parce qu'elle ne peut pas se déplacer. Elle, elle est donc euh, très faible, elle a, elle a beaucoup de peine à marcher et elle a, elle, elle, elle a euh, des, des muscles qui sont faibles. Elle est sous un traitement régulier qui euh, ne fait plus autant d'effet qu'il en faisait autrefois. Alors, euh, mon rôle maintenant, c'est d'essayer de, de, de lui euh, trouver des, des médicaments plus, euh, plus performants. Et ce que, ce que je vais faire cette semaine. When her workload allows her, Anne Spory likes to delve into her memories and recall her 45 years in Africa. C'était encore mes, mes premiers avions, là c'est Julia Teco. En 63, j'ai appris à voler ici dans la vallée. C'était pas facile. Parce in 1963, Anne Spoury learned to fly in this valley. Learning was hard, as it's a very windy area. At the end of 1964, Anne Spoury was awarded her pilot's license. She decided to go to the north of the country and use a mission at her base to visit the region's nomadic tribes. She was paid in goats and sheep. From time to time, she sent what she'd been given to Nairobi to be sold for cash partir dans un camion, euh, vendre à Nairobi, et comme ça, je me ferais payer. À ce moment-là, le docteur Wood m'a demandé si je voulais venir travailler avec lui. Un English surgeon, Michael Wood, founded the African Medical and Research Foundation in 1957. At that time, it was just a mobile medical unit intended to care for sick people wherever they lived. For that, they needed airplanes. That's how the flying doctors were born. Although it's still famous for its flying doctors, the AMREF has today enlarged Somebody its activities to, yeah. to include prevention, research and training medical personnel. Annie has had a life of AMREF of 30 plus years. She's not a young lady anymore and she knows nothing but AMREF. So whatever AMREF is doing, she will still take an active interest in it. When she started here, I would imagine the total employee rate of AMROF was probably somewhere in the order of 35 staff. It is now over 400. In the early days of AMREF, it was just a big, friendly family shop, if you like. It was the home charity. And it still exists in certain areas of AMREF today. It was very strong. It was a bond. It was a, a sort of friendship bond amongst everybody. Amra's three other founders were plastic surgeons. From the outset, they and Michael Wood wanted their employees to go out into the field to treat the sick. It was a dream come true for Anne Spory, who wanted to treat sick people among the most remote tribes, and that's what she does in the north of Kenya. Thank you <laughs> to all the mechanics who've been looking after Zulu Tango, Julia Teco, 
and Alfa Alfa Lima. Wow. <laughs> and there are quite a few who've looked and worked on, on every single one of these planes. You're the most responsible for keeping me alive. Thank you very much. As a woman, being a pilot and being in charge of her projects and moving in areas, sometimes with considerable personal risk, she, I think, is also a role model for many of the, our female staff within AMREF. So I think she has played different roles within AMREF, both as a physician, as a pilot, and as a woman uh, working in these well, areas I, and I, doing I things that few I'm women happy. are actually normally uh, doing. Jay Kansi can take, I'll just ask. I'll just I ask. guess the first time I remember seeing her was when I was going on a training flight with the chief pilot and Anne was outside carrying her own bags. And uh, the chief pilot was approached by Anne in, in very volatile language and uh, said, you are some gentleman, you don't help me to carry my bags. And the chief pilot looked at this lady, doctor of ours, and said, if you want to dress like a man, look like a man, and shout and swear like a man, then you can carry your own bags like a man which embarrassed me beyond all belief. And this is actually my very first recollection of Anne, who was now dumbfounded by the chief pilot. Is that your room from Dr. Spurry? Go ahead, Dr. Spurry. Um, I'm going to the safari park to try and get that uh, suitcase out with the, all the drugs. Medicines are scarce in Kenya, as they're too expensive and very difficult to get hold of. Luckily, Anne Spori receives donations of medicines, particularly to fight cancer among children. The medicines are collected by AMREF's friends in France. They're usually delivered by the captains of the flights to Nairobi. Can you take the, uh, the bags here, please? Since 1965, Anne Spori has been going to the northern villages every five weeks. Her route takes her from Laisami to Sololo, Barkor, and to Khan. During her tour of consultations, Anne meets some of the 38 different ethnic groups who live in Kenya. She comes across the Samburu, the Tukana, the Rondile, and the Gabra. Her visits are often the only way for these tribes to get treatment. Everyone here knows her habits and her timetable. Patients have often walked with their herds for days to come and see her. That's why Dr. Spori insists on regular fixed appointments every five weeks. It's particularly important because these patients often have no way of reaching a town to get treatment for themselves or their children. These consultations have been organized with the help of the missions in the field, which help out enormously. The missions, whether Catholic or Protestant, live off donations and act as base camps for the patients. On her visits, Anne Spori either meets the patients directly at the clinic or visits them by Land Rover when they haven't been able to move. La population augmente énormément. Quand je suis arrivé, il y avait 5 millions au Kenya en 50. Maintenant, il y en a 25. Donc en 50 ans, ils sont les 5 fois plus nombreux qu'ils n'étaient. Et il ne faut pas oublier que la moitié de la population a moins de 15 ans. Hein. On a très peu ouvert de nouveaux dispensaires, de nouveaux hôpitaux. Je suis arrivé, excepté peut-être à Nairobi, où il y a des cliniques privées un peu plus, etc. On est au, au même niveau que ce qu'il y avait il y a 30 ans. Les Samburu et les, les Rendile, il y a maintenant depuis 1965, je viens régulièrement. Les sœurs viennent, quand je ne suis pas là, elles viennent elles-mêmes ici tous les mois pour voir les peser, les voir dans quel état ils sont, etc. Et puis renvoyer sur le dispensaire ceux qui ont besoin d'aller au dispensaire. What's the name of the child? Da, uh, Dagati. What's she complaining of now? She's not growing. Elle a 5 ans, regardez ça, regardez, regardez ces pauvres. Elle pèse 8 kilos, Re, regardez ça. 
Uh, do you think she's normal? Look at her face. Look at her. Elle est big, hein? Elle, elle est peut-être mongolienne un peu aussi. I think she should really come to the uh, center and you give her a huge lot of all the best uh, multivites and things you can give. It's the only thing I can think that we could help her on. She can have uh, some... She should eat one every day like that. Anne tries to explain to her patients that medicine should be taken three times a day, in the morning, midday and in the evening. But they don't always understand. Some patients sometimes take them all in one go, thinking they'll get well quicker. But luckily this happens less and less nowadays. Les Africains croient que ils peuvent être malades que si les esprits ou quelqu'un une influence maléfique quelconque les rend malades. De sorte que dans leur tête quand ils sont malades, c'est pas seulement euh, le, la, la tuberculose ou, ou une grippe ou un rhume ou, ou un, 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 une, une jambe cassée qui est arrivée par hasard. Non, non, il y a une cause. Alors, ils ont très bien compris que la médecine moderne est bonne et que les, les médicaments sont bons. Mais ils veulent quand même savoir pourquoi, pourquoi ils sont tombés malades, parce qu'ils disent que ce n'est pas normal. Donc, ils vont chez le guérisseur ou chez le sorcier pour savoir. Et on appelle ça des witch doctors, ce sont ceux qui découvrent les witch. Les witch, ce sont les maléfiques. Mais moi, je me sers d'eux parce que le patient, une fois qu'il sait ou qu'il croit savoir et qu'il a, qu a payé et qu'il a fait la chose qu'il faut, eh bien, dans la tête, ça va bien. Il se sent en, en règle avec tout. Et ça, ça aide énormément mes médicaments à faire de l'effet. While working for Amrith, Anne Spory has had to deal with the witch doctors. But she's also had to find people to back her up in these out of the way areas. Nous, nous avons formé beaucoup d'agents de santé de, de village qui sont des gens du cru, qui sont choisis she's par les voisins, village health officers, comme étant who are chosen de, by their de les aider. Anne Spory teaches them to cure everyday illnesses for all better, to prevent them. Les, Aside les from maladies maladies this training, Nana Daktar has been very involved in Kenya's national vaccination program. Et puis surtout, il y a le grand programme de vaccination She transported the vaccines sur tout le in her pays. Alors, this speedy très, delivery très, maintained très the cold chain. En amenant tous les, tous les vaccins, à cause de la chaîne de froid, je les amène par avion dans toutes ces petites euh, euh, missions et hôpitaux. Avant, c'était seulement dans les villes et dans les endroits un peu importants qu'il y avait euh, des vaccinations, mais maintenant c'est partout. Et alors, dans certains endroits, par exemple, très souvent les missions pour, euh, pour faire venir les gens, euh, leur donnait, quand ils venaient régulièrement aux vaccinations, ils recevaient euh, du lait en poudre ou des choses comme ça pour, pour, pour améliorer leur santé, mais aussi un peu pour les, pour les motiver de venir aux vaccinations. Et on s'est aperçu que c'était une très mauvaise idée parce que dès qu'on s'arrêtait de donner du lait en poudre ou d'autres avantages, ils arrêtaient de venir faire vacciner leurs enfants. Et on s'est aperçu que c'était une erreur, qu'il fallait au contraire Parler plus souvent, leur expliquer et, et surtout ne rien donner comme, euh, comme récompense parce que la vaccination est quelque chose qui est indispensable et bonne pour l'enfant et on ne veut pas que ce soit quelque chose comme une récompense. Ces enfants maintenant n'ont plus la rougeole et n'ont plus la polio. These children no longer la suffer from measles or polio. Un bon recul. Je crois qu'on a beaucoup gagné. Ils sont toujours vulnérables. But they're still under threat from famine. La famine, la famine. And often suffer from malnutrition. The most progress has been made in the field of vaccinations. Les soins qu'ils peuvent recevoir et au point de vue des vaccinations, c'est un grand progrès qui s'est passé. Over the years, Anne Spory's work has come to include things outside the scope of a standard general practitioner. She sometimes even works as a dentist when the situation calls for it. La douleur de l'anesthésie est, est plus grande que la, le tirage de la dent, surtout que une dent qui a déjà voyé est tout à fait prête là. Zuri, finish. J'ai été demander des conseils à mon dentiste. Il m'a dit quels étaient les le genre de, de pinces qu'il faut utiliser. Et comme ça, j'ai appris à, à faire le travail. J'ai envie de miller dedans, hein, vous savez, dans tout. Il y a des très difficiles. Je me rappelle une ici qui m'a complètement... On n'est pas arrivé à la faire sortir. It's not always easy to get to all those villages. But Anne Spory tirelessly continues her odyssey among the northern tribes, even if she often has trouble landing her Piper Cherokee. 
As there are no runways, she sometimes has to land in open country where wild animals roam. It's impossible to find fuel for her plane here. So Mama Daktari has to arrange everything in advance. Boxes of medicines and medical equipment for the clinics, but also the fuel she needs. If need be, she also knows how to repair her plane's radio. And she's quite willing to carry patients, nurses, food or letters. Because of all that, Anspuri doesn't call herself a doctor, but a doctor, electrician, postman and general dog's body. And Spurry was one of those who early was faced with social aspects of health problems by visiting these very remote clinics and trying to help people in very poor parts of Kenya, where, of course, there were medical problems, but they were usually related to, to poverty, uh, to local conflicts, to lack of education, and a lot of social problems which are not traditionally part of what a health sector or a health institution is dealing with. And this has later on, I would say, spread within AMREF so that we do have currently sociologists and several anthropologists employed in AMREF dealing with the social and cultural and anthropological aspects of health problems and healthcare provision. Nice. So I think Anspori's experience uh, is fairly typical in that sense. In Sabukia, Anspori is responsible for many people socially, as well as medically. For families living on and around the farm, she has set up a health center where she advises really mothers sick, and children on family uh, planning. Have to keep them she deals with regulating births, and preventative medicine, hygiene, and social work. Gosh, but she also marvelous. supervises the school her friend oh, Rosemary has set up. Yes. Anne Spuri treated this Kikuyu woman when she was a child suffering from polio. Thanks to her, Rosemary was able to get her school certificate and can now stand in for her when she's away. Good. Okay, young man. I, I congratulate you. I, I, I hadn't known that you had this uh, very nice little classroom. And yeah. You've done all that, all the be uh, all the tables and chairs and everything. Yes, I've done. Very good. Doctor. Very I'm nice. Very That's really good. Huh? I'm very really happy. I met Dr. Spory in 1968, yes, yes, yes. September. The, the, the other place and by then I was 16 years old. Yeah. Why the so I good. had come from uh, Nairobi, Kenyatta Hospital, as I was affected by polio when I was four years old. And um, I, I heard about her. I did not know her, uh, she could give me a hand. But luckily, because my parents were very poor, she had to accept it nicely and she started liking me. So we've been together from then. On her 10 hectare farm, the inexhaustible Anne Spori also works as a farmer. This enables her to provide food and work for several families. To meet everyone's needs, she raises geese, chickens, sheep and cows. She also grows corn, a stable commodity in Kenya, for food and cattle feed and coffee. Allez, doggy, doggy. Voilà, ça c'est le café. J'ai 300 arbres à café, 300 buissons de café là. When the children from these families show a talent for study, Anne Spory gives them the financial support they need to go to secondary school. In return, she asks them to help her with the farm work. Some of these young women want to be nurses and others teachers. And Spori gives the women top priority as they often lack support from their families. According to local traditions, money generally goes towards the boys' education. Si on était découragé, 
euh, on ne commencerait pas. Alors, comme j'ai commencé, euh, ben, je, je trouve que c'est l'histoire petit à petit, hein, l'oiseau fait son nid. Si chacun fait ce qu'il peut, ben, finalement, ça fait beaucoup. Foundation, Foundation Control, how do you read? Uh, what's the weather in Nairobi? Still very cloudy. Still very cloudy, okay. Thanks well, to her I, radio I set, Anne Spory stays in permanent so contact with the AMREF and is always ready to leave if there's an emergency or just to take some lettuces from her garden to the far-flung tribes. Her work, like that of the other members of the foundation, has stemmed epidemics, encouraged better hygiene and made possible the prevention of disease. But there's still a lot to be done. Will someone else one day have the same energy? and be able to take her place.